on semis, manufacture of semis, mainly to the automotive industry, mainly to be the flat work of automotive industry. All right, low profitability margin, as you can see that, and they have been declining. So low profitability margin, but that's because it does operate in a low margin sector of the industry, which is highly competitive, by the way. The duration can be explained, you know, in regard, you know, in addition to the heightened competition, COVID as well, just made, just made everything a bit worse. You know, car manufacturers, you know, were not, uh, were not manufacturing cars or, or was spending a lot of their production uh, capability. So, Samsung uh, did not have um, the luxury of selling as much same as we did as we lucky. So, the supply chain disruption really wreaked havoc on this uh, margin. So, as a result of COVID, uh, it did impact the, as we talked, it did impact profitability, you know, due to low manufacturing capabilities. You can sell less, you can make less. Now, looking at the cost of revenue growth, as well as the R and D growth, you will see that that in the form, of, you know, in the case of cost of revenue growth, it, it has decreased. In the form of R and D growth, it's been decreasing at a downward trend. That does make sense. You know, you're not manufacturing enough. You're not manufacturing as much as you would like. You're not manufacturing as much as you should because of COVID and the supply chain disruption. So you're not gonna spend that much on production. So that decrease is understandable. You would have expected the decrease to go along with protecting margins, but it didn't. But the reason why they didn't do that is because sales was very, 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 very poor. We lost money actually. Um, we lost money actually. Uh, yeah, again, makes sense. You know, COVID really wreaked havoc on, on this industry. R&D for its part, however, has remained steady, still below industry average, but it, it has remained steady. Now, considering the sector of the market that's on same operating, it might not make sense, obviously, to spend too much on R&D considering the low margin. So, you know, I'm looking for stability, underperformance, you know, it's all right, you can look. Doesn't mean that one thing is losing its innovative edge, it just means the nature of the thing does not allow it to spend as much as you know the industry average. So, furthermore, the decline in revenue just highlights the tough operating environment and further goes a long way in explaining that the fact that your margins have been very, 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 very poor. All right, so net income, however, has increased 57%. Even though revenue decreased, but all of that growth was just basically driven by the fact that, you know, on the real cost of you know, decreased cost. That is just the realization of decreasing costs. Return on equity, again, poor. But expected considering the margins have been poor, there's been virtually no growth, it's actually been losing revenue. So that that makes sense. I mean, it, it is poor, though. It, it, it is poor. So as an investor, it shows you that I'm still really struggling in, in, in achieving um, returns on capital investment. You know, that ability has actually been declined. Okay, quickly to the financial position. The current ratio is deteriorated over the past three year period. It has rebounded though in 2020, from 2019 to 2020, it has rebounded. It has, however, underperformed the industry average, which is about 2.37, about 2.37. Still above one, very close to two. It does, at this level, you know, even though you've underperformed um, the industry average does show me that Ansem does still have enough liquidity on its cash. So it has enough short term as to cover short term liability. The asset is, same with the current ratio, it's underperformed the industry average, but at this level, it's not that bad. You know, it, it, it 
that show that housing is that still has enough you know so pleasing both ratios they are pleasing um both ratios the current as well as the asset test on top of them being pleasing they do not indicate any um, significant risk in liquidity the inventory however worries me a bit concerning the industry average is just over 101 days and consumer average gold stock for 26 days so it is worrying but again when you consider the fact there has been supply chain disruption you're not selling inventory as fast as you would like you stock is at start the value to be held longer for the industry for far longer than it has to be and this of course ultimately you know it will eat into margin you know especially that will eat into net income because of the fact that you're spending a bit more on holding this stuff so the increase in holding costs However, you know, so you might not have a choice because you know, supply chain disruption. You, know, you might not sell what you need to sell because you might not get enough ships, you might not legitimately support to ship and deliver uh, SIM to the uh, required destination. Does not indicate a significant risk, you know. When I look at the as a dollar value, you know, considering the fact that you know the, the asset test ratio is basically current ratio minus inventory. So basically, so this is the current ratio less inventory, the asset test ratio. So without inventory, it holds 1.15 um, current asset or liquid asset. 1.15 times liquid assets when compared, when compared to liability to hold 1.15 liquid times 1.15 times more uh, liquid assets than liability. Um, overall, it is good, but I am a bit worried considering you know there's a bit of a massive drop point if you look at it you know, with inventory it's at 1.9 so almost two without inventory that just 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 over 1.15 so it does show me that on semi does hold a significant amount of stock in dollar term which is worrying because that again plays on the increase in liquidity it makes the balance sheet very very risky from a liquidity point of view read together with the fact that both stock the far longer than it needs to and make this that make the balance sheet quite liquid for my mind uh, quite um uh, risky from a liquidity point of view it does have enough liquidity at the end of the day but you know from my point of view, it does not have the liquidity that I would like it to have for me to invest in. That's just the analysis of the current ratio, average ratio, and the inventory base. Debt to equity at an average of 1.46% is above the industry average of 1.26%. I don't like it. It's above the industry. Debt to equity is above the industry average. Debt to equity at this rate indicates that the balance sheet is significantly geared, it's highly geared. There is a massive increase in financial risk. So, I mean, the, the debt to equity just makes the balance sheet for me too risky and unattractive. Read together with uh, my liquidity ratio, you know, it just turns me off this, uh, this stock. The cash position, massive deterioration. There was a bounce back around 2020. And then you can live with that. The margins are below the industry average of 32%. Decline to a large degree again. So, the decline to a large degree can, of course, be blamed on COVID. However, there was a mass pop in 2020. Uh, I mean, look, it does indicate that honestly, this business model can generate cash. You know, it can, on average, generate 17% of cash from all revenue generated, which is a good sign. But uh, low industry average, decreasing, I don't like it. 
Now, the sufficiency of cash flow to a large group is driven by debt repayment. Mm -hmm. Most, there has been a bit of a deterioration, but a lot of it is was paying back the massive amounts of debt that constantly hold on his balance sheet. Um, now, debt payments do make up a large part of um, the deterioration in the sufficiency of cash flow. It does make up a large chunk of uh, cash being paid. It does well eat up a large part of cash generated. You know, and the fact that margins have declined has not done this ratio any good. Uh, 0.56 below the industry average of one, also of 0 0.84. So my cash margins, both of them below industry average, have been declining, slight improvement here and there, but uh, you know, the decline to me, even though it is understandable, I'm gonna stay away from this stuff. You know? It just really creates a heightened risk for me. So the PE very expensive. Industry averages, uh, industry average is sitting at what, um, just over forty percent, just over forty, and your PE ratio is one point seven, just over one point seven. So too much of an expensive stock considering. So for me, one semi, nah. I mean, look again. This will be investor dependent. You know, it's an underperforming stock. I could use my cash productively elsewhere and return uh, better, um, better returns actually elsewhere.